Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Back with you with part two of this spirit-led teaching. Knowing, discerning the difference between the cross and being crucified, which means we have to be able to discern the difference between the flesh and the spirit. And that only comes through, that only comes through the eternal ability of the spirit that you have operating through you through the discipleship of the spirit. We have to be discipled and spiritually discipled at that because that's how that's how that ability to preach and teach comes from the flesh because your teaching has to come from your preaching. Your, your teaching has to come from your preaching. If, if you preach the gospel, then you're going to teach the letter, which is the Bible, according to the gospel. If you preach the gospel of the spirit, then you teach the letter by the power of the spirit. So you're teaching the letter according to the light. And Antichrist is not unlawfully using the letter to blind you to the light. So we, we discern the difference between the cross and being crucified. The cross being a work of the flesh, being crucified by the power of Christ being an eternal work of the spirit. Romans 8, 9 says that they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as the seed. The children of, of the flesh, they have a viewpoint of the cross according to the flesh. They cannot please God because they're not walking with him. They got a, a religious church mentality, a Bible-based church mentality at that. But they with all the children of the spirit, they have been crucified by the power of the spirit. They've been crucified to sin by the power of the spirit and not only crucified to it, but resurrected from it. And uh, we're going to get into how they that are in the flesh view the cross and how they that are in Christ, how that work takes place in the spirit. Let us go to it. Let us go to Galatians, uh, not Galatians, Romans chapter 8, 5 through 8. Romans chapter 8, 5 through 8. 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. They view the cross according to the flesh, a Jesus died for their sins mentality. But they that are after but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. They, they know that they're crucified to sin. Where in anyone outside of being crucified, they think Jesus died for their sins. They think Jesus died for their sins. So they, they have a Jesus mentality. They're following Jesus according to the flesh, but do not have a revelation, in the revelation of Christ in the mind of their spirit that they were crucified to Jesus by Christ. You don't have to be born again to follow the written teachings of Jesus. You can do that by sight in the flesh. You have to be crucified to following Jesus because that was a church mentality. When you're crucified to Jesus, you're then spiritually in Christ. You're then spiritually in Christ. When you're crucified, you're crucified spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. That means we're crucified in the flesh and also to the flesh. For to be carnally minded is death. That's a death mentality. All you see is his death at the cross. You don't see life, you just see death. You're not, you're not crucified with Christ. You're not crucified by the power of Christ to sin so that you can be risen to the newness of life. No, all you see is death. All you see is Jesus' death. You don't see nothing else. You have a Jesus died for your sins mentality. So to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because you're in the life of God. When you're in the life of God, you're in the eternal peace of God. And not only in the eternal peace of God, but Christ is your peace. 
is the peace between you and God the Father. Because the only way to God the Father is through Christ. He's the circumcision. You Anything outside of Christ is antichrist. This nonsense of just come as you are, that's a church mentality. You can't, you can't go to the Lord in sin. You have to be brought unto the Lord. But when before you can be brought unto, unto the Lord, you have to be made spiritually, spiritually acceptable. That means you have to be crucified to sin. And through Christ, when you're resurrected to the newness of life in Christ, you're now in God. But you're in God sin-free. You're in God sinless. Because the carnal mind is at enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. For the carnal mind, that's your spirit functioning in accordance with your flesh. It's not talking about this, this gray matter up here. It's not talking about the natural mind. It says for the carnal mind, that's your fallen nature where your spirit began to function in accordance with the flesh. Is the in, in, enmity is at enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. That's the law of life. Neither the law of commandments, neither indeed can be. It's not subject to the law of life, which is in Christ Jesus. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. See, they that got a cross mentality can't please the law because they're not operating in resurrection power. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Okay, that's Romans 5, 8. They got a cross mentality. Now let's go to Romans 8. That's the children of the flesh. Now let's go to Romans 8, uh, 9 through 11. These are the children of the spirit. 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God, which is Christ, dwell in you. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of Christ the, uh, the spirit of God dwell in you now that's right now if any man or woman have not the spirit of Christ he or she is none of his they're none of his if you don't have the spirit of Christ you're none of his because that means you've never been crucified to sin you, you, you got a church mentality of Jesus dying for your sins but you have never been crucified by the power of Christ to sin to come out of that, spir that spiritual ignorance. See, that ignorance is what Antichrist is using to blind you to sin, to blind you to being crucified and what happens through being crucified and you just got a Jesus mentality. You got a cross mentality. 10. And if Christ be in you, if Christ be in you, as he was in Jesus. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. The soul and the body, your soul is the, is the body of your spirit. And this physical body is the habitation of our soul. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. That's the soul and the body. Because when you were crucified spiritually, the mind of your spirit, you were crucified to sin. To the root of sin, your soul and body die to the fruit of sin. This is what it's talking about. So if Christ being you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit, which is the intellect of your soul, the part of us that communicates with, with God the Father through Christ, is life because of righteousness. The soul does not fellowship with the Lord. The body does not fellowship with the Lord. Only our spirit does. 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. See, Christ has to be in you just like he was in Jesus. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken. That's to make alive your soul and body. Your mortal bodies 
by his spirit that dwells in you. So the mortal body, which is the flesh, our humanity, is made alive and put under the government of the first fruits of true Christianity. This is the power of being crucified with Christ, crucified by the power of Christ so that you are living beyond the flesh and the flesh comes under the government of the spirit. You're no longer as a fallen man or woman exi uh, existing limited to your malehood and femalehood. Now as a resurrected gospel man or woman, woman living in the fruit of the spirit, your humanity, whether male or female, has come under the first fruit government of the resurrection of the spirit. Of the resurrection of the spirit. So these are they that have been crucified. These are the children of God. They're operating in that resurrection power. They're operating in that resurrection power. And that brings us to a conclusion of part two of these of this teaching. All these things have to be they have to be broken down so that people can see the difference between the flesh and the spirit. They can see the difference between light and darkness and choose light and live. Now, why why is it important to discern between the flesh and the spirit, to discern between the letter and, and the light so that you can go the way of the spirit? And when you go the way of the spirit and you're transformed in the mind of your spirit, the flesh comes, your humanity, the flesh comes under the first fruit government of the spirit. Now you got the foundation on the inside with the revelation governing the flesh on the outside. So when trials, when you face trials in the flesh and difficulties in the flesh, you're overcoming it by the power of Christ in the spirit. Because you're living beyond it. You're living beyond the world. You're living beyond money. You're living beyond the flesh. You're living beyond material possessions. You're living in the, in, in the first fruit revelation of Christ in the spirit. And everything outside of that is going to become elementary to you. It's not that it's not important. Uh, money and material things are important. And we need them. We need them. But we have to have them in divine order. If you want what if you want what the Lord is going to give you the promise of a living promise that governs you every day on this earth of what he's going to do for you it's going to have to come in divine order because the Lord that the Lord will give you promises that'll make you stop going the way of the flesh and you're going to yield the way of the spirit because you're going to come into the goodness of the spirit now his goodness is in who he is But you can also see that goodness financially and materially in what he does. Okay. Because the Lord provides for his children completely. Completely. When we when we were crucified, when we were restored back to sonship, it took care of everything. It took care of everything. And that brings us to the end of part two of this teaching. See you in part three. Love you in the Lord.